Because, um, but go ahead, Jim. Okay. I would like to talk about the tire incident. Now, from my understanding, on okay. August 2nd, you put up some pictures. You said, hey, look, my tire was slashed a week after I was doxxed. Um, you asked people to stand with you and your tire. But almost immediately, and I'd say within like 24 hours, you had people responding, doing close-up pictures of the uh, images that you shared, saying, yeah. uh, that's dry rot. That's not a tire slash. Uh, you weren't attacked. Your tires are shit. You need to get them replaced. <laughs> you then put up receipts from like Riverside and a towing company as well, saying that, hey, look, they verify what I say. But those were customer copies. In fact, somebody tracked down Riverside and got a statement from them where they said, we didn't tell her that. We, uh, you know, we'd like if she wasn't putting our name out there. We're not involved in any of this shit. Even the Michelin Man account, the fucking <laughs> Michelin Man account, looked at those tires and said, that is not a slash mark. You need to get that <laughs> inspected. <laughs> Come on. So, honestly, so Laura, what the honestly, fuck? Honestly, I really think that Michelin should like sponsor me. I have sponsors. <laughs> I think that Michelin should make, make me a sponsor for life. <laughs> I could be the face of their whole tire campaign. Okay, so this is what happened. So this was around the same exact time that I was getting a lot of those death threats and nasty messages from people. And you know, I'm like a single girl. I live by myself in New York. Like. You know, sometimes it makes me kind of nervous when I get some of these nasty messages online and people are sending me my address and calling me saying they know where I live and that they want to come kill me. So I wake up one morning and my car, um, like my tire, I saw it and I got in the car and I was like, oh shit, this, it looks like it's slash. And I started freaking out and maybe I like, I probably did overreact. I probably did. And I took a picture and I was like, oh my God, like people were sending me death threats. People were saying they know where I live. Someone probably slashed my tire. And I just, I was really freaked out. And so I, um, I called AAA and then um, I was like, well, what does it look like to you? And the guy goes, oh, I don't know. It could be a slash tire. I don't know. So then I called the police just because I wanted to make a police report because since I had re been receiving a lot of death threats, I thought, well, I should probably do this in case someone really did slash my tire. And look, I'm a woman. Look, I'm a woman. Like maybe I should maybe I should take a course or take some type of lesson on car maintenance so that I'm not so ignorant so that I can spot these things better. But I don't know anything about cars, right? Like I pay people to take care of my car for me when I, when I take it in to get service. I don't know anything about cars. I mean, why would I? So and then on, when the police didn't they showed say, up. Uh, didn't they say though that the a receipt that you had like, like two receipts, never, Andy. It, yeah. it was Riverside and the towing company. That's that's the thing. They were com they were customer copies. Yeah, yeah but I'll and I should have I should have documented this better, but I'll explain to you what happened. Because this sure. people can people can have their own ideas as to what happened. So so then what happened was they took it to I believe Riverside and the police officer was doing the report and they're like, Yeah, I mean it looks it looks like it was slashed. And so here I am going off of what the police officer said. And then when my car was brought into the parking lot, someone said, Oh, like who did you piss off? And I was just thinking to myself, Well, I guess the police officer thinks it's slashed, so it's slashed. And you know, obviously the tire was done, so I just went with that. I thought, okay, well it's slashed, and that's what I had said online. And I didn't really think much of it. I wasn't I wasn't trying to do anything. I was just trying to make a point. And when I brought it to Riverside, they gave me a, a form. And I said, can you please document this? Like this other guy who works here said that it was slashed. Can you document it on a form so that I can give it to the police officer as part of my report? And he said, um, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know what you want me to really document it on. And he gave me a form and it said customer copy. And then I, I realized, okay, well, this says customer copy. So I went back and I got another form and that's his handwriting. So it's not my handwriting. I know people were like laughing at the fact that it was a customer report. I didn't fill it out myself. I had asked him, do you have another form? He goes, no, this is, this is all we have. And so when people were attacking me and saying they wanted proof of this, I took the picture of the form and I posted it online. And there was a guy named there, guy guy named Frank who worked there, I believe his name was, and he had said, Oh, well, if the police need to talk to me, like they can just call my shop. But I guess people online took it upon themselves and bombarded them and you know, I don't know who they spoke well, with. Well, it was just I, the one person that, yeah, that talked to him. But I mean their official company statement was, No, that's not what we told her. 
Um, and well, we don't want to be involved in this. There was a guy named Frank who worked at the store. I don't know who they spoke with, but a guy named Frank who worked at the store wrote it on the paper and told me that if the police needed to talk to him for their report, he, they could call him. And that was that. I mean, I, I don't know a lot about these things, right? I'm just going to go off of what these guys were telling me. And I wasn't well, expecting One thing I'm curious about, Laura, is on both the receipts, though, I mean, I, the, the handwriting does look remarkably similar. But on both yeah, the receipts, there are no parts listed. There's no fees listed. There's no prices listed. If one of them is a customer survey, that's fine. But why wasn't there any documentation of the fees that were billed for the towing service? Because I have AAA. AAA is uh, free towing. Okay. So you, it's just a wild coincidence that they kind of look similar. The, yeah, the handwriting looks similar. The, the thing is similar. It's like a handwriting sample. I don't write in print. I write in cursive. I only write in cursive. I don't write print. I, you'll only see my handwriting in cursive. Uh, no, Jim so is saying you, that the wait, wait, Andy. Uh, Andy, you're Sorry. killing me here. <laughs> I can't hear you. Wait for the super what chats, Andy. Uh, no, I was going to ask you. Um, uh, oh, okay. So y this is what y you told them. You talked to them. What oh, happened I, afterwards? Did you I, go? Did you go back to them? Did they say, "Hey, we looked at it, and it's not a tire slash"? What was the follow-up to it? No, I think they just. Let me see what happened. If I remember correctly, I believe that. What did happen? I think they just put like a new tire on my car. And I picked it up and that was that. And then I paid and that was all. And then I had brought the tire to the police station because they had told me they wanted to see it. But then when I got there, the officer was like, oh no, we already like took pictures. We don't need uh, we don't need you to have it here anymore. So then I threw it out and that was that. But you know, it wasn't, I wasn't trying to be over dramatic about it. Like I wasn't asking anybody to do anything for me. I was just nervous because myself and when you're getting all these death threats and then one morning you wake up after someone tells you they know where you live and your tire is cut open or looks like it's been slashed you know maybe maybe i should have been a little bit more rational right maybe i should have thought to myself oh well maybe it is a blowout maybe i should just calm down instead of you know immediately jumping to conclusions and thinking someone slashed my tire but so what do you what do you believe it was very do you think it slashed or do you think it blew out i don't know i mean Look, I was going off of what the police officer had told me, and the police officer said it looked like it was slashed. I don't really think it matters at this point in time because I have a new tire now, and you know, all is said and done. But I know, I know it's forever going to be a meme that follows me for the rest of my oh, life. Oh yeah, no, that's and, just, uh, that's attached to you like glue. Yeah, that ain't rubbing off. Uh, oh, okay. You know what? Uh, we we, we, we can agree to disagree on the tire thing, but there there is the biggest issue in the video that I did. The main, you know, like crux of the video that made me really get interested was your conversation on the 20th with Cassandra Fairbanks and Lauren Southern. Uh, these are quotes from yeah. what they said, and I, I want to talk about this whole thing with you, uh, them, Gab, and everything. Um, Cassandra Fairbanks said, and I quote, she is Harvey Weinstein with a vag. She is blackmailing multiple people, and there was an accusation of rape. Now, after that went out, Nick Monroe uh, began to post conversations, DMs, Facebook messages, as well as a video interview with Gavin, who, and I'm summing up, you know, the five to eight minute video that he had done that said, in essence, uh, she harassed me. Uh, she stalked me at my work. She sent an insane amount of text messages to me. She went after my family and my friends. She told me that if I wouldn't go on a date with her, she would dox me. She would tell people that I was a homosexual. Uh, he also went on to say that you had made some very, very weird fucking statements. So let me, let me ask you, Laura, you're a Jew, correct? Yeah, but there's context behind all of this. And I, I think that... Um, well, no, no, I'm curious. Once... Did you actually use the line, uh, before we even get into the, the, the meat of this, did you actually use the line that you wanted to have Aryan Jew babies with him? <laughs> <laughs> it, probably, it was probably a joke, but yeah, I probably did use that line. But let me explain wait, something. Wait, 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 Laura, will you say the 14 words with me? We must ensure the existence of our cars and a future for working tires. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you what happened. Because this, you know, and I told you, I was having a conversation with Baked Alaska about this too. And it's actually like really funny, but it's also kind of embarrassing. I said, you may think that someday when someone throws you in a group chat or like they start messaging you about stuff and you're just like having jokes back and forth, like, and you say things you're, you have no, you have no idea what your future is going to be like. So this, a lot of these messages I had sent was just like, joking back and forth and it was just trolling this guy Gavin. It was nothing serious. It was a couple of the guys who worked with him. There was what this one guy named, I believe, Eduardo Rivera, who works with him, and then this other guy who had a, an account presented as 
uh, James, James Miller, I think. And they would just message me online and ask me to troll Gavin. And they sent me the address for his job one day. And they were like, oh, you should tell them that you're there because it will like really freak him out. I like sent him a message and I was like, oh, I'm here. Like I'm here for our date or whatever. And it was just to troll them because he was also in a group chat. And I know it sounds totally immature, but you know, I don't know. It was just, I was just screwing around online and I had no idea these messages were going to like be screenshot and come back to like. Well, why would he make a video? And a video saying this, putting himself out at risk of litigation. I mean, an accusation that you're sexually harassing him is pretty severe. Well, he did stop because I did threaten him with litigation along with Lauren Southern and Cassandra Fairbanks too, because you can't just go around falsely accusing people of rape. Like if he, if he thinks I'm weird, right. And I, I was just trolling him and I, I honestly, I, I can dig up the old Facebook messages as well and show you where they're like, Oh, you're totally creeping him out right now. Keep going, keep going. It's so funny. We're laughing our ass off. Like it was, it was a joke, but I do realize how I probably should have thought about it and taken more precautions and thought, Oh, well someday like it's, if someone were to ever show these messages, it would look like I was being a creeper and a stalker, or it would look like I was um, actually there because nobody would get the context because they're not in these other group chats that I'm in, right? So, well, what is the my what, fault what exactly there, is the accusation of rape? I don't believe that's Gavin. I think Gavin is a separate issue. Well, when Cassandra yeah, mentioned it, Gavin, Gavin called me a serial predator, and it's like, look, if you think I'm annoying or whatever, fine. But I never threatened to dox him. We never went out on a date. I was never interested in him. You know, the prop, the whole homosexual thing—that's not me. Those are some of his own friends who are literally saying things like that. And, um, you know, we would run into each other at different events because when you're in New York and you're conservative, obviously, like a lot of conservatives go to the same events. And I, he would always try to tell people, oh, Laura, Laura saw me, she did this, she tried to do this and blah, 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 blah. And they would send me the messages. And I don't know what his problem was, but he always had this real strong animosity towards me for absolutely no reason. I never did anything to him. It's on his uh, Facebook one day because he like cropped his mom out of a picture and then he got super offended because she saw the message and then was mad. But like it was it was a joke. I, I don't even really know a lot of his friends. I don't know his family members. I think that this kid is just very malicious and about himself. Like when you're working for a struggling publication like Liberty Conservative that nobody really knows or cares about, you're going to try to surf somebody's name. Like has he, has he right? Publicly, to try to has he publicly retracted the statement? No, but when I had reached out to one of his uh, coworkers, Eduardo, I don't know if they still work together. I said, I'm going to be sending him a letter. So what's the address? And they were being weird about giving me the address. But I told him, you can't just go around making these false accusations. But, but, um, well, the accusation being of rape, the address, I mean, Gavin's saying that you're stalking him. I can understand that. But I mean, if this public what? statement's still out there and he hasn't retracted it, we never, we never had any type of relationship. It was, the communication on Facebook or whatever, it was a joke. It was really just honestly a big troll that went terribly wrong. I took screenshots and tried to create an image in a situation that never happened. It was just a joke. It was supposed to be a couple of his guy friends trolling on him because they thought he was very annoying to work with. And um, I don't know, I thought it was kind of funny. So, I so why, why haven't you sued him then if he hasn't retracted it publicly, if it's still out there in a statement that he stands by? Well, he stopped for the most part. For the most part, he stopped. I mean, my. The, well, yeah, the but if I said right now on this live stream, Laura Luma raped me with a tire iron, and then I didn't talk about it anymore. Well, the statement's still out there, right? I mean, you'd either want yeah, a retraction or a lawsuit. I I understand, but look, it takes. Those. It's not that those things aren't happening or aren't in the works, but you know. The main, the thing that's important is that people stop making these accusations. And that's what happened with Cassandra and Lauren as well. Like they stopped because they received letters. They received, um, they received legal letters. And the thing about Cassandra is made obviously a false allegation of rape and she has nothing to back that up. She, if, if I want to ask people right now, if I raped somebody, where's the, uh, where is the report saying that I raped somebody? How come I'm not in jail? Like if, if, if there actually is some guy out there with a me too claim against me, how come I haven't, <laughs> how come I haven't been taken in? Like, where's, where's the evidence? Did he get a rape kit performed on him? I mean, did they like swab his mouth and you know, well, what's going you, on here? Right? Laura, so, since you brought up um, swabbing mouths, uh, somebody did bring up uh, a question related to this. 
Uh, again, this is information I didn't have at the time I did the video, but it seems related to what Gavin's saying. So I'm not sure if it's referring to him or somebody else. Uh, they wanted to ask me, and I'm quoting, ask her about the Proud Boy she blackmailed into eating her pussy, which said it smelled like wet bread. Uh, not making this up either. It was a guy she recorded saying racial jokes and threatened to release him if he didn't go on a date with her. So two questions. One, did that happen? And two, those does are, your pussy those smell are the like wet bread? No, it doesn't. And secondly, like that never happened. So I don't understand why people think it's okay to make jokes like this about women online and say things and make accusations. Because how would you feel as a man if I was going around saying, yeah, I was at a bar with him one night and like he blackmailed me. He told me that he was going to like dox me if I didn't get a blowjob. Like against you as a man are more damaging against you as a man than they are for me as a woman, if true, because of the way our culture and society is, right? Especially now with this ongoing Me Too movement. So before people want to make jokes about these false rape accusations against me and these pretty disgusting claims that I blackmail people into, you know, doing sexual favors, which I don't have a problem in that department. Like, I don't need to blackmail anybody. Um, <laughs> Go on. For the record, I just want to put that out there. Yeah, 